I think that the economy is still growing above trend. I think the unemployment rate is at its lowest level since the late 60s. And I think inflation's at our target. So that's a strong outlook, right, and suggests that we probably need to be gradually thinking more about taking back some of the accommodation. But again, I don't think we can say where we're getting to at this point. We've got to assess the conditions on the ground, and as we go forward, use those conditions to inform our outlook. We had Rick Reeder from uh, BlackRock on this week, and he looks at the bond markets, and his concern with what he's been seeing in the markets is that it's this big kind of game of Jenga, you know, where you pull out brick by brick and hope that you're not going to topple the tower. Right. He said the Fed is pulling out bricks from one side as it raises rates and pulls away liquidity, and the Treasury is pulling from the other side as mm -hmm. they're selling more bonds to try and finance uh, the needs of the government. Mm -hmm. um, he thinks it's going to be okay, that the, temp, that the Jenga tower is not going to topple, right. but he thinks it's going to happen, that it'll be safe because the Fed will stop. Is well, that I think we're going to keep our focus on the economy, right? What's going on with inflation? What's going on with maximum employment, right? And so that's what we're focused on always when we're thinking about calibrating our policy to the economy. So if the conditions on the ground change and our forecast over the meeting run changes, we're going to try to set policy right appropriately to try to get, you know keep those those goals in mind. So again, you know, he could be right in terms of you know we might move faster or slower, but we're always focused on those dual mandate goals, and it's always informed by the data what's going to what's going to happen to the meeting run outlook and the risks around the outlook. I thought when Joe was asking you about the meeting, he was going to ask you if there was bacon at the meeting. Yeah. And so I'm going to do that for him. Uh, do, is there bacon at the Fed meeting? Uh, there probably is, but I don't eat bacon. You don't eat so bacon. I, okay. I, I don't know. I'm not. I, I think that had to be asked, otherwise yeah. it would be a loss of opportunity. Yeah. Um, um, there's uh, a go ahead, Joe. No, I just please. I, I want wages to go up. Finally, because we hear about that's where yeah. all the populist rage comes from, yeah. and that no society can continue along this path. And then I just see the Fed watching so closely for the slightest wage pressure to, to turn the screw the minute we see what we're trying to accomplish happen. Is, okay. is there some wiggle room? Okay, I don't interpret it that way at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's is it, probably not surprising. Is it wage price pressure the one thing that really gets your attention in terms of whether you're behind the curve? And isn't that what we want deep down? It depends down on why. There isn't that much pass through, as far as I know, from wages to price inflation, right? We see that firms are telling us they're raising wages because, you know, it is hard to find labor. But we haven't seen a big surge in price inflation. So we focus on price inflation. That's our goal. Okay. You know, wages could be going up because of productivity that would going be good. up, right? That would be a very good thing. There's no inflationary pressure. You don't want to lean pressure. into that. There's no there? inflationary pressure from that, yeah. right, if that's the cause. So again, right, we focus on the two goals. Right, I agree with you. Wages going up is a good thing right. if it's driven by productivity. Well, we worry right. about it. We worry about what the uh oh wage number got too hot. The Fed's going. You know, the market just, does. The market. I, the market worries mean. about it probably as a reaction to what it thinks the Fed is going to do. Yeah. Right, Loretta, we're kind of out of time, but I do have to ask you one question. Um, the president has criticized the Federal Reserve, um, and I've got two questions about that. The first is, is it from your standpoint, is it appropriate for the president to criticize the Federal Reserve and to comment the way he does on policy? But the second is the substance of his comments, which are that the Fed is moving too fast and the Fed is moving under President Trump, but didn't move under President Obama, at least only once. So we focus on setting policy, focused on the two goals that Congress gave us. That's how we do policy. We come into the room, we bring our views on the economy, we bring our forecasts on the economy, and that's how we set policy. Anyone can say anything they want about our our policy, right? But we, when we go into that room, we bring our views and we focus on the two dual mandate goals that Congress gave us. And that's how we do policy. I've been going to FOMC meetings since the end of 2000. And I can tell you, and multiple, of course, chairs of the committee, and I can tell you that's exactly how we work. We look at the economy, we bring our forecasts, we look at the dual mandate goals, and we always set our policy focus on those goals. Alan Greenspan was here last week. He said the Fed has to put on earmuffs, and that's what they did when he was there. Do you still? We focus on the goals. I mean, we're set up to have the luxury of being an apolitical organization, and that's what we do. That was great. Thank right. you. Thank, thank you so much for being here, Steve. Thanks, thank Steve. You. Thank you.